this entitled mother thinks she's got the perfect scam to eat for free. But not every restaurant is naive enough to fall for her tricks. What anti-entitlement countermeasure do they have against this entitled mother? Happy birthday if today's your birthday and on with the revamped show. A couple of years ago, I started working in the front office of a collision repair center. Let's call it Fix It Queen. The shop specialized in fixing damaged cars from auto accidents, but sometimes had to take on mechanical repair work as well. We had, at the time, two mechanics with about 50 years of combined experience and certifications, four or five painters, three detail guys to wash and vacuum cars, and eight repair technicians. My job was to estimate the damage, submit our estimated cost to the customer or insurance company, whoever was paying, and secure payment for the estimate. This took place in January or February. After a recent snowfall, the customer, I'll call her Emma, came in with two small children, probably no older than six or seven years old. Her accident hadn't injured the children, but her Audi SUV had slid on a patch of ice and struck a guardrail, damaging the back quarter panel and both doors. As part of the customer process, I introduced myself and sat down to discuss discuss a few things with her. I basically knew she was going to be trouble when the first remark was, Oh, you're the guy I'm supposed to talk to? I thought I'd have someone different. I let the implications of that statement go, laughed it off, and explained the repair process. I asked if she was having her car repaired at our shop, and she said she had questions. Did we use Audi parts? Yes, we had a deal with the local Audi dealership and used their parts store for Audi and several other high-end vehicles. How long would the repairs take? less than two weeks. Everything needed to be replaced, then repainted to match. We would check all the doors and sensors and even test drive her car before calling her to state it was fixed. Were the repairs guaranteed? Yes. For as long as she owned her car, we would guarantee any paint and parts put on her car. We would also provide invoices from the Audi parts store. Did we have a rental car available? No. The rental was handled by her insurance company. Now, Fix It Queen had a partnership with her insurance company, so her insurance had already sent sent her a rental car company that came to pick her up. I presented Emma with a contract or power of attorney that reiterated what I said verbally, advised that she pick up any belongings, and in 11 point font stated that any work done would have to be paid for before her vehicle could leave the shop. We didn't use small print for our contracts because corporate said so. I told Emma that she would owe a $500 deductible according to our insurance company. When she came to pick it up, Emma signed and I made a copy of her driver's license. Emma went outside with the vehicle company agent, let's call her Mystique. I filed her paperwork and returned to the lobby area to find Mystique and Emma standing there, both frustrated. Emma was mad that the rental car being given to her was a Chevrolet Impala and not an Audi. Do you have an Audi or similar vehicle you could rent out to her? No, we don't do rentals. We fix damaged cars. We don't rent them out. Emma sucked her teeth. That's very rude of you to say. My insurance company said they would have another car like mine here for pickup and I want another car like mine. I have two small children and I need to keep them safe. I explained again to Emma that we could not do this and she huffed then sat down to call her insurance company. Mystique sat down to play on her phone. I guess I should explain that Fix It Queen had a lobby area and that they were sitting on the sofas in the lobby with Emma's two children playing around them. Emma talked very loudly to her insurance agent and to escape the noise. I went to do my job. I went to Emma's Audi SUV, drove it into the shop, and assigned it to a technician. When I returned to my office, Emma was still on the phone, yelling about the substandard rental car. My boss came to the door of the office and asked what was going on, so I explained and told him I was taking care of it. I continued to ignore Emma's ranting on the phone and threats to drop her insurance company so I could call the Audi dealership to order parts. My contact there verified part pieces and guaranteed delivery by the end of the workday. I sent the order to her insurance company to have payment transferred to us and went to tell Emma the good news. After a few more minutes, Emma got off the phone. She had been in the lobby for a little over an hour. I asked how things have gone with her insurance. Emma basically stated that she was going to take her car and leave and would drop her insurance as no one was helpful. I asked Emma to hold on and went into the shop to find her car. Auto repair technicians usually work quickly because the more cars they work on, the more they can get paid. I found Emma's Audi SUV with both doors removed. The rear bumper loosened and the tech was working to remove
remove the right tail lamp. All of these steps were necessary to replace her damaged doors and quarter panel. I returned inside and told Emma what had happened. She shrieked at me, shrieked and grabbed her hair because we had already started working on her car. She accused us of working on her car without permission, threatened to sue us, and called me an idiot. I went to the office, made a quick copy of her signed contract, and brought it to Emma. I told her that she had given us legally binding permission to work on her car and that we had begun work per that agreement. I also told her that in accordance with our work authorization, if she chose to remove her car, she would first have to pay the fees for the work already done. We would stop work until we could verify how we would receive payment. I also told her that Mystique would be able to advise the rental car company's fee on upgrading her rental. Over the next three days, Emma called several times. Her insurance called several times. And other collision repair shops called several times. Everyone wanted to know how repairs were going and what's going on, etc. My answers were always the same. Emma owed a $200 USD bill for the labor involved in starting the repairs and canceling the parts order. And after the first 24 hours, we were charging $25 US dollars per day in storage. We would not do any further work until we were paid for what had been done. By the end of the week, Emma came in personally, talked to my boss, and agreed to repairs as she was paying out of pocket for an Audi rental for her children. Her car was fixed by the end of the following week, but I think her insurance ended up dropping her because we charged them for storage fees in accordance with our contract. Often people like Emma end up making life more difficult for themselves than it needs to be. A lot of this comes down to expectations. She expected a particular car in a replacement without doing the research first. She expected to just take her car back without properly having read the contract to see that she actually owed them for the work that was done and that she had given permission for them to start work straight away. If only she had done that little bit of work beforehand to understand the service she was going into or post that fact realizing she hadn't done the research, just accepting their terms and conditions, she could have saved herself a lot more money and a lot of stress. My parents owned a restaurant that closed like 14 years ago. It was a small business, but being on a busy road, it gets a good number of customers. It's important that you know how the restaurant worked with the orders. You go to the counter, take an order, and you go sit at a table, and then your food is ready. You get up and take your food, and then you can either stay or eat your food somewhere else. If you eat somewhere else, you had to pay when you pick up your food. The food you could buy there was like breakfast food, ice cream, pancakes. For the staff, there was my mum, my dad, and sometimes other employees. Because of this really small number of workers, my parents had all the roles possible with the manager one. They cooked, they served, they took orders. So it was summer. My parents with two cookers were the only staff members in the restaurant this day. The restaurant was very full at this moment. And then, it's a monster. It's a devil. No, it's a Karen. With her, I want to speak to the manager haircut and three kids of like five to seven year old. Already at the start, she didn't look like a nice person. But boy oh boy, she's even worse than I thought when my parents were telling me the story. When she arrived, she ordered enough food for a complete buffet, choosing extra food here and there. Then they go at their table, having ordered a lot of food, but took a long time before they can eat something. When the food arrived, they ate like one fifth of what they had ordered, my dad says. But when the time came to pay, that's when it all began. Time to meet the cast. My dad, an intimidating guy, but who is actually very nice. Mum, not so intimidating, but very smart. Entitled mother, and me, wait, I wasn't even born yet. So my dad came to their table with his book where all the orders are written. Then he announced it. So lady, this will cost you $101.35. Will you pay by credit card or cash? $101. Yes, ma'am. Will you pay by card or credit? I won't pay that much. Sorry, but you need to. My kids deserve this food. How can I feed them if it all costs $100? Sorry, but- I know the owner and you should give me discounts at least. Sorry, but we can't do that. I want to speak to your manager, someone with more authority than you. My dad then turns around to go to the kitchen and then comes again and says, I am the manager and I will ask you to pay immediately. EM huffs and then pays before leaving by screaming, I will get all of you fired. It would already be a good story of entitled parents, but too classic for me to post it. You know what that means? It's not finished yet. The next day, she came again, but this time with a random guy that nobody in the staff knows, not even my parents. My mum came to talk to them. Hello, how can I help? I'm here with the owner. And 
he wanted to speak to your manager. Yep, she said that. So we have another person that I'll call FO for fake owner. Sorry, I think I misunderstood you. What did you say? I am the owner and I want to speak to the manager. My mum was very confused and goes to find my dad. She again thought she misunderstood the lady. Hi, do you have any pro- I'm here now with the owner. Yeah, I'm the owner and I fire you for being rude with my friend. Yep. They did that. They really did that. EM came with a fake owner and tried to fire my dad. Uh, is this some sort of a joke? No, absolutely not. Didn't you hear? You are fired. Uh, you got me. Now this isn't funny anymore. No, this is for real. Now go away off my property. I'm sorry, but you can't fire me. Yes, I can. Are you sure? Yes, I can. <laughs> That's funny because I am the owner. Their mouths were about to hit the ground when he said that. They were so confident and then they shut their mouths. They tried to run as quick as possible, but my dad quickly grabbed them by the shirt and pulled them inside. Now my mom, dad, and the co-owner that came after my dad called him and had a long conversation about how that's not illegal, but they wanted a caution of $300 for what they tried to do. After that, they left as quick as possible. What I want to know is what kind of friend would volunteer to be the fake owner? They seem to think that it wasn't illegal, but I'm pretty sure impersonating someone is. So to have the nerve to go up to a business pretending to be the owner to fire someone, you have to be a pretty strange person to think that that's going to actually achieve something. I'd like to imagine that she put an ad on Craigslist asking someone to impersonate as the owner of the business and paid them like 10 bucks or something. That's the only way I can imagine somebody actually doing this. I work at a large supermarket. This incident happened at Christmas when we were all ridiculously busy and stressed trying to keep up with customers. I work on the checkouts, which were absolutely rammed that day. I had just started my shift when EM immediately raced for my checkout just as it had opened. Hi, how are you today? Hi, I'm not buying anything. My daughter picked up this bow off the floor and we were wondering if you could tell me the price and show me where more of them are. Note, at this point, there were already at least three customers queuing behind her with full shopping trolleys. Sorry, but I believe this is someone's lost property. It belongs to the child of one of our regular customers. I work a lot, so I recognize the bow. And we don't actually sell those ourselves. Her kid is holding the bow and trying to put it in her own hair. Me, not believing that she wouldn't try and walk out with it, asked for her to hand it over. I can hand it in to the customer services for you to ensure that she gets it back next time she comes in. Her kid starts crying at this point because I'm asking for it back. Don't cry, EK. Mommy will get it for you. To me. Could you possibly call a manager. Surely they won't mind if we take this small thing just for one time. Sure, no problem. A manager was literally just walking past at that point, so I called him over. Hi, everything okay? Hello, we found one of your items and your employee won't sell it to us. Manager looks at me weirdly because he also recognizes it and knows we don't sell it either. Right, can I take a look at the item and I'll see if I can get a price for you. Lovely. EK, give it to the nice man. He'll make sure you get it. Thinking they've got their own way, they hand over the bow to my manager and the EM has this nasty smirk on her face as she looks at me while her daughter is handing it over. Oh right, now I get a closer look at it, I've just realized we don't actually sell this item and I also believe that it belongs to one of our regular customer's children. So unfortunately, I can't let you have this item as it's lost property. I'm going to put this someplace safe for them for when they next come in. Sorry about that, manager walks away with the bow while EM EK bursts into tears and starts screaming bloody murder. EM gives me an absolute death glare. Was there anything else I could help you with today? She just sort of makes a humph noise and starts dragging her kid off while muttering about getting in contact with our head office. The customers in the queue were all trying not to laugh at her as she walked off. Ah, I love working in retail. You know, you have to deal with a lot of terrible people in retail, but there are these moments like this as well. Just that little bit of justice. There are definitely days in retail that are not boring at all. All thanks to those people who just try and keep pushing outside the social norms. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.